In this video, I want to explore a really great proof of the law of cosines. So let's get started. Start by writing down this is a proof and that this is the version of the law of cosines that we're proving. So here's our triangle right here. Let's start with labeling. Let's label the corners A, B, and C. And let's label the sides across from those angles or corners A, B, and C. So that's our setup right there. Finally, let's just drop a perpendicular. That seems to always help. And let's call it H. Now, if you're proving this for the first time, if you're trying to use this diagram to get to the proof, you wouldn't know what to do. You would try things. It wouldn't work. You'd come back, try something else, keep going and going and going. But I'm going to give you some guidance here. So we're going to call this side X. Okay. Take a moment, maybe pause the video. What would the cosine of A equal? Take a moment, pause it, write it down, and then press play and we'll talk about it together. All right, so the cosine of an angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So since this is a perpendicular right here, we can assume these are right angles and we've got a right triangle. So the cosine of A is x over b. And then, even though you might not know where we're going with the proof, play with that equation and rearrange it. Multiply both sides by b. Is it going to help us? Maybe. Is it cool to be able to do that? Sure, because now we know what x equals. I feel like we're getting somewhere, right? Next, let's look at this length right here. We haven't defined that. Let's call it y. What would y equal? Maybe pause the video and write it down, and then press play and we'll solve it together. y can be thought of as this full distance c minus x. That's what y is going to be equal to. All right. And interestingly enough, we already said x is equal to, what do we say? x is equal to b cosine a. So we can say that y is equal to c minus b cosine a. And I feel like we're getting somewhere. Look at this. In our goal, our goal is to reach this formula here. We've already got a b and a cosine a. We must be doing something, right? Let's keep going. Well, if we look back at our first triangle here, and we look at these two sides, what are we looking at? What ratio? That is, well, from the perspective of A, that would be the sine of A. Now, the sine of A is the opposite over the hypotenuse, H over B, and then we multiply both sides by B, and we have a new definition of H. That perpendicular that we dropped is equal to B times the sine of A. And we're doing great. We're almost done. If we look over this triangle, we could redefine cosine of b and the sine of b and, and, and try to use that. I find it's helpful, though, to then remember, all right, well, if this is a right triangle, let's incorporate the Pythagorean theorem. You can see that theorem is kind of in, hidden here, a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So let's, let's try that out. If, if this is a right triangle, a is the hypotenuse. That means a squared equals y squared plus h squared. Now, maybe pause the video and try some substitution here. Take the value of y, we already have it defined. Take the value of h, we already have it defined, and then press play and see if you got it. Okay, look over here. y is equal to c minus b cosine a, and h is equal to b sine a, so plug that in. And boom, we've got this. Now this is essentially the law of cosines, but we wanna show it. This first binomial right here, let's simplify that. So C minus B cosine A. Maybe pause the video. Don't look, don't look, pause. Oh, no, I showed it. That's okay. Uh, but maybe pause the video. See if you can get what I've got here. All right? And make sure you also get this. So just go through both binomials, square them, and see if you agree. Pause the video and then press play when you're ready to solve it together. All right. Let's just verify what happened here. I did C times itself is C squared and then c times negative b cosine a twice, negative 2b cosine a, and then b cosine a times itself. So it's b squared and cosine squared a. And that's a distributive property, essentially. If, if that's not working out for you, let me know and I'll show you in detail. b sine a squared, that's just gonna be b squared times sine squared a. Now put this all together, we're adding these things, and it becomes this gobbledygook right here. And this is beautiful because it reminds me over and over and over and over again that algebra can take something like this and simplify it. How can we do it? Well, you might just keep moving things around, but maybe 
Try it for yourself. If you simplify this enough, you will end up here. See how far you can get. Pause the video, simplify this, and then we'll solve it together. Okay, you might notice that these two terms have a b squared in them. So I want to I wanna factor b squared out of those two things. I also notice I want to leave this term alone, the 2bc cosine a, because that's exactly what I need in my formula. I also want to leave the c squared alone because I have a c squared in the formula. So really all I need to do is play these two terms by factoring out a b squared, right? So when we factor out b squared, something beautiful happens. I think it's beautiful at least. What's left over is cosine squared a plus sine squared a. And what does that equal? What's the cosine squared of a plus the sine squared of a? Well, that's 1. And boom, right? That is 1. So essentially, I need to write it there. b squared times 1 is just b squared. And I'm going to bring this b squared in the front. And there it is. That is the proof of our law of cosines. And we've contained it in this triangle right here. You, we focused on the cosine of a at the beginning. I encourage you to think about how to rewrite this proof using this same diagram to reach the other two common versions of the law of cosines. All right, thank you.